Let's wait for okay. one more minute for for Sam. Yeah. Okay. Sam is here. Full chrome here. Hello, guys. And uh, and last week I was working on revamping the uh, um, the B tree implementation based on the episode the updated episode version, so we can use it as the as we can based on it and to improve to to come up with the async version of the uh, uh, B plus tree. And as also I was working through the uh, um, design doc, try to materialize in in my head to to see what is a uh, to see if I'm understanding it correctly, and to see how how I can how can re rework the async async asynchronized B tree implementation based on this talk. Um, and question. Also, yes. So that async B tree. Um, are we sure that's it's going to be even at all possible to integrate that with Store? I ask because we're going to be really specific about the exact layout of the keys and values. We're going to care a lot about what a pointer is. We're going to care a lot about how the addresses work. And we're going to need at least two versions, one that's physically addressed, one that's logically addressed. Right? Because Definitely. The we will necessarily... use it. So, Please go on, sorry. I haven't looked at this project, but is this flexible enough to fit all, to tick all those boxes? I think the idea is to... The first thing is to to get myself familiar with the with the pros and the cons of the B tree implementation, and also, I give me a chance to to review the um, the different uh, variant of B tree. For example, the top down B tree and the bottom up B tree. And that's the, fair. It's certainly a good. It's probably a good place to learn. That's that's true. Yes, and I don't think we will be integrating the the the, the episode version of Btree into uh, C store. Instead, I think we will be, we use a heavily customized version of Btree implementation. Actually, it will be totally rewritten if we, if we take a look at it, it uh, like two years later, it will be quite a different animal, I think. But uh, I think that's right. So I was going to start by essentially running one from scratch. But it certainly does make sense uh, to take design cues from existing ones. Yes, I think the, the the approach will be start with some. Uh, actually, yes, I will start from scratch. But uh, I think I will be modeling after 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 it regarding to the uh, rebalance and the the design. But it will be quite different, yeah. I, I believe. Heavy uh, customized version. It oh, will be quite different okay. in the end. So let me know when you start. I don't have the internal interfaces yet for it to attach to, so I don't have a good sense yet for how I want to do it, but I, I will be getting to writing a B-tree in the next at least three weeks, maybe a little more. Okay. I think I will be take care of it, but if you are moving faster, I will hand it over to you. Well, it's more that I'm, well, yeah. No, that's, that's, that, that's fine. Um, I guess the only caveats are try not to do any I.O. Hmm to write it in terms of processing buffers so that the consumer of it just works in terms of fixed size buffers and uses the library to manipulate them. Don't try to actually do I.O. Yes, I will do, use some stuff. Well, I'm saying don't, don't even, don't even like, don't work in terms of futures either. Make it a purely functional thing. Or make it a purely in memory thing to, to well, no, that's not quite what I mean. Um, I guess I see, assume, I see. assume that blocks reference each other via some kind of ID, and then just work mm -hmm. from there. Yes, because I see. The, the next layer we, we, down we'll... is going to be crazy opinionated about exactly how blocks get written out, because B-tree updates will have to be part and parcel of the same transactions that update other things. They'll all hang off of the same transaction system. So I don't think it makes sense to burden that implementation with those details, particularly as they don't exist yet. I think I, the idea is to I mean? abstract the reference using some ID instead of an address. Well, I mean, that's all it's ever going to be, right? What we're talking about on disk is if it's the O-node tree or the, or, or, or the um, OMAP trees, those will be logically addressed. So those will be using some length logical address, probably 64 bits. Yes. Yes. Um, 
and a second system will be used to resolve those to physical ad addresses, right? Yes, that's that's why I I like the the design of the upscale tree because it was it uh, it checks the I O like move or write or destroy using the allocator. I think that's a nice thing. Probably we can use it. Maybe. I don't know. Maybe I'd have to look at it in detail. It's just I'm just not convinced we'll be able to. Well, I'll reserve judgment. I'll have to take a look at it. Yeah. I, once I, I I have a better idea, I will write it down to 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 iter reiterate using a typical use case and go when it over with you and the, the team to to make sure. Yeah, that makes that sense. That makes sense. Yeah. And I think the next step is to to start from scratch and model model it after using the B tree and uh, use some st stuff to shape ship, ship up the. Uh, Oh, and, uh, sorry. By 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 C store. To finish the thought, there was that that those two things are one category of B tree, except one of them is um, integer indexed and the other is uh, string indexed. There's another whole category too, which is the LBA tree itself is a B tree, but it's physically addressed, not logically. So its whole sort of purpose for existence is different. It it's still a B tree. It's just that all of its internals will be different. More importantly, the way it interacts with the I, GC will be different. I think and every I will operation. Start from, yeah. Big on, sorry. I guess I'm, I'm 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 saying as much as possible. We don't want. We would like a, a B tree implementation that can cover all three of those use cases and also mm. is usable in a way that allows you to arbitrarily combine it with other block out uh, mach machinery. Like, I would have to be able to tell it up front, by the way, I'm going to put the block you're moving over here. Please take that into account. You see what I mean? It also needs to be able to deal in terms of deltas applied to existing blocks, because that's how the journals work. Mm -hmm. So really try to think about how it would fit into an overall transaction, because I'm, I'm just not sure that an off-the-shelf solution is going to work like that. I can't think of any reason why I would design something that works like that, to be honest, if I didn't have a really specific use case in mind. I see. I'm not quite sure how to how how I would to tackle it tackle it, but I will be targeting the uh, um owner the tree and the, and when when design it, I will take take the uh, um, LBA tree into in, into consideration. Well, and Hopefully but the most the thing. most important thing you have to take into consideration is that the same transaction will include updates to all of them. Hmm. That's the most important part, and also to the actual on disk blocks with data in them. That is when we like when we commit a transaction that does a write to an object. We need to update yeah. the, the the transaction rewrite. We, we write has to contain deltas that modify the actual on disk offset for the data, and also the O node. And if either of those result in a new block being written out or moved, then it also requires a change to the LBA tree. And if we choose to put checksumming in the LBA tree, then that also would require an update. So, and we're, the, the design intentionally allows us to mix all of those updates into the same atomic transaction so that we never have to worry about inconsistent disk state. Um, yes, I think, I think that's so something is, I, I was, I was yeah, worried when, really, when, when really uh, looking at your, your document. See, it's a good thing yeah. because it means that it's relatively simple to combine transactions into one journal. It means we don't do the RocksDB thing. If you think about it in RocksDB, we journal on top of a journal. We journal into RocksDB keys that are themselves journaled into a journal, right? Yes. If we do it log, this log. way, we get to, yeah, in this case, we get to combine them into one single log stream, the deltas. The, cost is that it's very difficult to build abstractions that cross those boundaries, which is why I'm leery about using an external library. If, you, yeah, if we think we can make it work, that's one thing. I'm just, I'm just warning you that it may be a lot harder than it, than it looks. I see. That's it. I, I think I, I will be keeping you guys updated. Uh, yeah, uh, Kafu, I have uh, spread the PR according to your comments and updated it. 
so please review it and uh, uh, the other time I'm uh, deep starting the, the C store design so could you guys uh, divide it, the C store design to some subtasks so Chun Mei, I'm, I'm at least a month away from that. Sorry. Huh? I, I, I need to get enough of the of the internal interfaces written so that we have a functioning prototype, and then it'll be pretty easy to divide up tasks to improve pieces. But that's going to be several weeks. Oh, okay, I see. So uh, then during these terms, uh, we will do the deep study, got into your uh, C star design and the other papers, and. Uh, 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 by the way, uh, the self allocation uh, my subsection uh, submission is accepted. Cool. Congrats. Did you did you receive the the response? I did. Okay. So okay. So uh, no more work done. No more coding work currently, and just the study. And uh, hope. Uh, you guys review the PR quickly. That's all. I will do this, uh, this, this day, today. This oh, afternoon. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Good day. That's all. Hmm. Yeah, hello. I was. Uh, I was. Uh, uh, first of all, I was reviewing uh, a bunch. Uh, a, a bunch of uh, PRs uh, for Crimson. One is uh, Kifus uh, B3 uh, library. Another one is uh, at PRs from uh, from uh, Inkin about uh, the fixed uh, policy uh, in uh, in Sister. Uh, looks good. Uh, also, I made some performance te performance testing of uh, quite not of not so old master for the sake of uh, discussion with uh, Roman Pieniaev uh, and uh, also I was discussing on the level with uh, Avi. It seems uh, we started to create iteration of the input buffer factory concept. Uh, that's me. Hey, Radek, a question. Uh, did you did you see the changes uh, Avi made to uh, Sister with uh, the point with the unique pointer holding uh, uh, futures? Did, he made a, a big, uh, a pretty big uh, change. Uh, no, I haven't more. taken. Uh, I, I haven't taken a look on. Uh, do you mean unique pointers in future implementation? Yeah, if I remember correctly. I haven't taken a look on 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 you on futures uh, just uh, just uh, the network layer. Okay. Uh, but I I will take a look. Sure. Ronan, how's it going? Hi. I um, I was missing most of the week. Uh, I'm still working on, uh, uh, well, Clang, one thing that uh, I'm working a bit. The other is the, uh, I'm fighting with um, blanks and uh, indentation with uh, Avi to push the fix to, uh, to push a fix to Sister. I'm now in version four and we'll, there will be a version five with a few blanks removed. Um, and, uh, I hope uh, this week to finish the uh, ASOC uh, PR. Um, there are a few comments uh, by Kifu uh, uh, regarding uh, many a design decision we made uh, a few months ago that to keep the original design having the ASOC uh, owned by the TEF context which is, was strange, but this is how it was uh, in, in the original code. Uh, I'll be moving it to the OSD itself. Uh, it will take a few days, and then uh, I'll uh, publish a new PR for this. I'll modify the PR for this. Uh, that's that's me. I will be. I will. I won't be. It worked for hundred percent for the next week, so I try to do what I what I can. 
good. Rona, how is how is the CBD test going? CBD, uh, I had. Okay, this is a question I wanted to ask. Uh, currently, I only see two crimson tests. Is it right? The two, uh, two, spe two, only two crimson specific tests. These are the ones that uh, we use to compare. What do you mean by two crimson tests? We ha have a, a Jenkins job for for co com comparing the uh, the the mem the performance on master and the performance with with the PR in question based on master. Yeah, I understand. Uh, what I was looking for was for a uh, crimson specific uh, under the directory crimson in the that are executed. I only noticed ah. two, I think, or three. These are the ones yes, that which like, uh, that. Uh, it's based okay. on the, These are the ones test uh, from from uh, from from a QA test suite, and it's a customized a little bit. Of, for, for, for Crimson. It's a very preliminary, and I, I assume that we will be improved it over time when we have a better coverage of a, of a Crimson feature, feature okay. wise. Okay, I will need to recompile uh, uh, the old version before my change. Oh, I hope yes. we, there will be another. Oh, oh just look what, what, the, what is the next delivery will be and see what, if the performance is, uh, is not changed. Do we have number? No, it won't help. Um, no, no. We, we don't have numbers uh, that are kept because uh, it's, a, it's a change case by case. It depends depends on your hardware spec, right? So we don't have a number. Yeah. Okay. I will uh, uh, try to create the old version and test it on on my laptop again. Uh, I don't okay. know how how uh, how good it is. Uh, um, by the way. It, um, one of the things I noticed is the fact that as I'm using uh, Fedora 31 and uh, it's uh, using C Group 2, uh, we have a problem with. Uh, we, I have I get warnings for some of the uh, settings. Um, I don't know if you noticed it that some of our code uses right. C Group 1. You're you're running the test in uh, in the container. Uh, no, I was okay. running it on my laptop. No, on my laptop. You I probably have the user permission set up in your. I mean, if it's trying to set the C group, it's probably expecting to be able to set its own group, which means it expects to either uproot or to have permissions to. If you want to figure out what it's doing, you'll have to find out why it's doing that. But I expect that the reason is simply that your laptop is configured differently and your user doesn't have those permissions. That will be my guess. I'm not sure it's a. a just an issue of permissions. I'm using a, I'm running as a root. Um, I know there is a change in C group. Sorry? Sorry, never mind. What I'm saying is that I know that uh, there is a change in the C group uh, implementation version uh, in the version of Fedora. So it might be, I noticed it on other tools also. So it might be part of, uh, of the problem. Okay, if it's a specific to Sistar or Sistar or Crimson, probably can post 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 me with the error message so I can also try to look at it. Okay, when I when I get to uh, repeating this, I send you. Okay, that's it. Thank you, Renan. Sam. Yep. Um, that was. Out of town doing stuff last week. I'm starting to work on C store properly now. My immediate goal is to get as quickly as possible to an implementation of the LBA layer and below. That should start to give us an idea of physical write amplification for block overwrites without the rest of the object store implementation in place. Um, I'm hoping to have something prototypey that people can use of most or all of the object store interface within, or certainly by Cephalicon. But in the, in, in the immediate term, there's just not enough there to, for other people to help with yet. Um, so I'm going to work as quickly as possible to get past that. But I would take weeks before we're at that point, rather than days. Um, it does occur to me that if anyone's looking for something to do, the um, continuing to work on recovery would be 
Excellent, since we're definitely going to need that sooner rather than later, especially now that Blue Store exists. So if anyone's interested in that, send me an email and I can put together a document about where, where we currently are and what needs to be done. That's all I've got. And the same, I have got question regarding to your uh, design talk. Yeah. I still, I still quite, 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 don't quite understand what, what do you mean by in any transaction that moves that block or modifies the reference set? So okay, so what is, the what, is, what yes. literally is the definition of moving a block? What do we have to do to move a block? Yes, exactly. No, I'm, I'm asking you. Oh, by moving a block, I think it, it's a, it means whenever we reallo reallocate a block or modify a block, that's what I mean by, by move. No, I mean, block. what do, we, okay, so blocks are immutable. We don't modify them, right? Once we write them to disk, we don't, we don't rewrite them. So, no, but we, we definitely obviously do overwrite object extents. So we have to reconcile those two things. We have immutable blocks on disk, but we have mutable object extents. So we're going to, going, going to attack this from two different directions. We're going to do the classic file system thing where we defer the actual writeout until later by packaging the initial write as a delta. In a conventional file system, this would be a write to the journal, right? With me so so far. So you, what do you mean by delta? Does it, the delta includes the uh, the blocks or just the operation? Not the minimize the operation. Says, I am a I am a modification to this block, right? That's what a delta is. It says I am modifying bytes two through twelve to be this. Okay. And but okay. we don't write out the whole block when we do that. We simply write that as as part of a transaction record. That transaction record will contain many such deltas corresponding to all of the updates we need to do atomically, as well as some new blocks. But the delta could also um, just include the, the metadata, like, for example, I just, There's which, no such which thing metadata implies that I, I need to rewrite, There's rewrite no such a thing single. Hang on, we haven't gotten to that point yet. We, there is no such thing as metadata at this layer. Uh, so all we're doing is overwriting blocks, right? This is a, a, I mean, a, a I mean the, the, the operation itself instead of the, the, the tangible block. Yeah, but we haven't talked about that part yet. This is at the physical layer. All we're talking about is physical blocks, which we can write to, or we can write deltas that modify them. So when we're re reading forward in the journal stream from wherever it is we start, every time we see a delta, we read that physical block off disk and apply the delta, and then move forward in the, in the journal stream. By the time we get to the end, our cached blocks reflect what the actual, what, what we think the physical block should be. So the next question is, how do we actually do a block write-out, right, for when we actually need to write down a new version of it? Okay. So, that, so the next step is, as in any conventional file system, you pick a new place to write the block to. Well, any copy and write file system is. You pick a new place to write the block to and you write a transaction, a new transaction, this is a whole separate transaction, that includes that new block address, and also any mutations to blocks containing the metadata that point to that block. In our case, that's the LBA tree. Wait, wait, hold on, the, the transaction does not necessarily include the, the address of the new block, right? It doesn't, it, yeah, it would necessarily have to include the address of the new block. You could do it in two phases. Okay, cool. You could write out the new block and then write deltas that refer to it. That would be safe. But to address one of your points in your document, there is absolutely no reason why writing a record can't refer to its own address. ZNS devices do not make it impossible to know the address you're going to write to. They on, that's only true if you're doing streamli uh, streamlined um, uh, anonymous writes, and they don't all support that, and it's not clear that that's where the industry is going. It's a good strategy if you want parallelism, but we may get parallelism otherwise. by writing to multiple set, um, segments at once, which we'll do okay. basically guaranteed. You have to do that to get device, to, to get the full parallelism available in the drive anyway. Okay. I'm not saying that's wrong, but even, but it works in both cases, right? Either we can predict the, block, the address, in which case it's no problem to write out the block and the deltas at the same time, or we can't, in which case we need to write out the delta, the block first and then the deltas. 
keep in mind, <clears throat> these are typically background operations in the sense that they don't block the currently ongoing write. It's just that we're flushing dirty data out of cache or doing a segment move. So it's okay if, that, if, if, if we need to squirrel that in among two transactions instead of one. Not a big deal, because the initial write only required that delta. Now, as to the question of whether we propagate these changes up the tree, yeah, we absolutely do. So the LBA tree, according to the calculations I have in the doc, in the worst case scenario, fully fragmented, is like a six layer or seven layer ButterFS tree, right? Yeah, so yeah. if we do a write and then fully write out all of our blocks, it's gonna take us like seven trend, uh, transactions because we can only update one layer at a, at a time. And it's going, to, and we're gonna have to update like seven blocks. But this is the beauty of B trees. This whole technology strategy is based on the fact that to up, for every block we update at level N, it has 47 N children. So when we go up one layer, we're overwriting a block that could potentially have had 47 other things change it. When we go up two, 47 squared. When we go up three, 47 cubed, and so on. So the probability that we're capturing multiple writes increases geometrically the further we go up the, up the tree. So okay. generally speaking... So, so, so what do you mean is that we, when we rewrite or... Sorry, we reallocate a... Uh, uh, Airbnb B, B tree node, we we probably pick it back like multiple yeah. uh, multiple change along with. But I think probably, we need to probably not at the probably not at the leaf, but yes, at the next layers up. So but I think we need to right. finish our transaction before moving on to another transaction, so we cannot be benefited from not, it. That's not how this works. We can't. Well, okay. Technically, we could re, we could rewrite out the, the the entire path from root to leaf, but we don't want to. For one thing, that's a guaranteed worst case write application. Nothing we do can possibly be worse than that. Second, every time we go up the tree, we geometrically reduce the number of nodes. Right. So the further we go up the tree, the better it is not to write it out. because it's highly probable that we'll see another change to that node like really soon. So you're talking like about the, the top, top, top bottom B tree, right? No, this, this, this is the same regardless of how your B tree is, is uh, designed. The top oh, one, sorry, if it. you're doing the ButterFS thing, so ButterFS actually does work like this. If you look at the implementation, it's just very complicated. So if you look at the at, at the top to bottom or bottom whichever one ButterFS uses, you have to make a bunch of modifications to that model to make it even at all tractable. Otherwise, the write application kills you. So they do have tricks for deferring write out. They try to okay. avoid materializing the the new tree. But think about it: if we actually have to write the entire stack of nodes every time, that's fatal. We can't do that. It's too expensive. Yes, yeah, that's that's my concern. Probably I need to take a second look at the uh, the ButterFS. Yeah, tr no. Try try reading an old textbook. Try reading a textbook on on B, on B trees or the Wikipedia page. Okay, okay, we do. Like, don't don't think about clever implementations. Just think about the math for how many nodes have to exist at each level, and think about how you could defer doing write out. Mm -hmm. Everything else is just details. Like it's just ways of changing the way the caching works or integrating it differently with the, I mean, all that's curly cues on top of the basic fact that every le level of a B tree is geometrically bigger than the one up above it. Because of fan out, right? Okay, I'll accept that we can avoid that sort of kind of overhead as a, as a fact. I mean, there is overhead. It's just that it doesn't degenerate necessarily to the entire tree. Okay. In 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 well-behaved situations where you're doing insertions and removals from the same part of the tree, you will actually not you'll hardly ever do metadata updates because you'll combine many of them into this. Like imagine you're doing sequential insertions into a B tree, right? Every single insertion does not cause a metadata update, right? The first one does. You write out a bunch. You write out the first node, but the next 45. You, those are just journal updates to that to that block, right? 
when you finally do a split, you'll have to write out two new blocks, but by the time you wrote out those two new blocks, you're already 47 squared operations in. So the number of full block writeouts turns out to be only like, like the total amount you write turns out to be only like double the actual key value uh, in, insertions, which is really good, right? Probably I just need to um, reread the text to, to understand how we can, can can streamline the uh, the write to the to the internal nodes. Otherwise, uh, from from my from my understanding, we need to work through. No, it's it's finish and run run checks and before moving on to another. That will be a very huge write implication. Yeah, you don't have to do that. So let's let when 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 you're updating the leaf of the tree, for one thing, that's it. You don't actually write the leaf out. You just write out a delta to that leaf. Eventually, either we hit a journal checkpoint, which are infrequent, or we choose to write out the B tree, that, that, that leaf, because it's cold, or we haven't gotten updates, or we have cache pressure, or whatever, right? That write out requires a new transaction that dirties the node above it. But same deal. We're not actually going to write out a new version of that block. We can leave it in cache until a journal checkpoint or longer if we change the way journal check checkpoint thing works, right? We could go a really long time without writing it out. The only important thing is that if we crash and come back up, we have to be able to recover our in-memory version of that node. But that's it, we can do that with deltas. So we only actually do write out when we don't think we're gonna get further updates to that node, or we have to for journal, check for journal checkpointing reasons. That is, we try to keep any block dirty for as long as possible. But if we do, do once we, we have to do, do a checkpoint, we have to work through all the all the journals. Oh, sorry. All yeah, the, but it's it's not synchronous. All the log, log, logs. If, if if you take a look at the or if if you think through it, there's no reason why the journal checkpoint has to be synchronous. We can continue doing writes. The only important thing is that we can't get rid of the old epic of journal entries until we have written out all of the, the blocks. So basically, we start a checkpoint, we continue doing writes, but we also cram in as many dirty block writeouts as, as we can until there aren't any deltas in the old epic that refer to dirty blocks. Or if you think of a, a, another way, you can think of every, every dirty block in memory has an epic number that reflects mm -hmm. the um, journal epic at which it was written out, right? Yeah. At which it was last clean, rather. So every time we write out a dirty block, obviously its number now advances up to current, right? So when we start a checkpoint for like, let's say we're on uh, checkpoint 100, we just have to, in the background, go over every block that's dirty and has a checkpoint number below 100 and do a write out. Once there are no, once there are no longer any such blocks, we can drop the previous uh, deltas. It doesn't have to block writes, it's just a thing we have to do periodically. And we can do this as infrequently as we want, limited by how much space we're willing to waste for the journal and how much time we're willing to spend doing replay on startup. Yes, I understand how we trim the log and play the log, uh, replay the log. But my concern is, for example, if we want to rewrite a, a uh, internal, uh, internal note, A, for example, and after like um, 10, Ten insertion, we probably we need to rewrite the the internal node yeah. A for for ten times and do the split. And the the the, the crux of problem is that we cannot interleave. We cannot sh shortcut this 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 problem this this write like com compress the the ten write into a single one. We need to replay the whole. There no, you go. The oh no no no! You keep the block in memory. Every dirty block is in is in memory. So when we want to do a write out, we simply take the in-memory copy yeah. and dump it right to disk. Oh, we don't have oh, to replay okay. deltas or anything. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Okay. Um, the okay. Assumption that's that's any, what the any, flush any, means. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Exactly. I got it. It, it. it does mean that we're bounded on how dirty we can have blocks by how much cache we have, but that's not an unusual property of these systems. Okay. So so I was looking at the worst case problem. Okay. That's not that's a false problem at all. Yeah. If you have no cache, this is a lot harder, right? You just have to space. You Indeed. just have to spend a lot more write amplification. That's just the way it goes. But the more cache we have, the less write amplification we have to tolerate. 
Yeah. And that's also an ex like if you go back and read like the very first log structured file system paper, that's basically the game. The more cash you have, the less interested you are in the actual on disk layout. Because the on disk layout only serves to repopulate your cache. So it doesn't really matter if it's dirty or scattered around or fragmented. So that's sort of the fundamental trade off of, of uh, systems uh, designed like this. Okay. Okay. And to, to, Thank you. To, to sort of foreshadow a future concern. Persistent memory serves as a super awesome version of this. So persistent memory ought to be significantly cheaper than DRAM. So one of the reasons I'm not really fussed about any of this is that with persistent memory, we can keep metadata structures in persistent memory. So all of this high, high write amplification stuff may not matter at all because it's not going to be on the, on the ZNS drive in the first place. But, but it also said to keep it atomic is has a very large overhead. Not compared to writing to ZNS, it doesn't. It's basically free. Mm -hmm. Like, you're yeah. right. It's, it's and more it is expensive than DRAM. Complicated. Uh, yeah, it, it, it's all about perspective. Compared to DRAM, it's very expensive, mm -hmm. right? But compared to going over the NVMe bus to a ZNS device, it's nothing. Especially because reads are actually almost as fast as, as DRAM. Does that make sense? So like this, this whole thing we're discussing about the LBA tree, for one thing, for an FTL drive, we're not going to use a tree for this. We're going to use probably a fixed table like F2FS does. And if we have... Um, okay. Do you mean indirect memory, table? Yeah, exactly. Like, like F2FS. Okay. Um, and well, so what I'm proposing for a ZNS drive is that we create another B tree that does the same thing that the indirection table in F2FS does. Um, there are a lot of reasons why I ended up coming around to that design, but one of them is that for devices that do have FDLs, we don't actually have to do a tree. We can do a fixed offset table, which will be cheaper, or rather it'll be expensive, but it'll be expensive in, in SSD hardware. And if we happen to have persistent memory available to us, then that's where we'll, we'll put it. Does that make sense as sort of a longer term goal? So uh, in the first version, do we implement a table or, or implement the B tree? B tree first. I want, I'm, I'm, I'm actually B3 curious. First. I'm actually curious. I'm, I'm, I'm going to get some hardware in from a place I guess I can't talk about that will allow us to actually introspect the media level write amplification below the FTL. And I'm actually curious mm -hmm. as to whether doing it as a copy on write tree reduces write amplification compared to a table. So I want to compare them both anyway. Second, for ZNS okay. devices, we actually have to have the tree. So it yeah, What do you, do you mean by, by table? Is this a hash, hash table or something? No, it can be just a fixed offset table. If we know that the LBA space oh. is, is dense, then you just allocate a bunch of space at the front of the drive and you use it that way, like an inode table, but, you know, way bigger. And only storing, you know, numbers, not inodes. Does that how like, do we allow you to query the, the overhead? Like the, like a metric you can query it at the wrong time. What's that? What do you mean by, by you can query the overhead of, a, of, a, of FTL? Oh, um, so it's possible that a table is actually less efficient than a wandering tree. Okay. Or, or more efficient. I don't know. It, it could be either. So I sort of want to implement both versions anyway. Um, and we have to have the wandering tree version for ZNS. At least for bare ZNS drives without some kind of a, a EMEM front end. In other words, without random mutations to the table, it might dramatically reduce the amount of internal wear leveling the drive has to do. And that might actually be better than reducing write amplification within the tree write-out space. Um, there are also some tricks Kifu I'm planning on doing with the logical addresses themselves. If you think about it, if I make the logical address space pretty big, then for um, 
then for these these uh for the tree solution we could arrange it to be the case that for instance pgs and objects have their logical addresses close to, together so if the actual block writeout and the onode updates both happen to be close together in logical address space then those updates within the lba tree will tend to happen at the same time and will tend to have they'll, they'll tend to be captured by the same write so that alone will, will buy us a significant reduction in write amplification, I expect. Because the only way you get one block write out per write is if nothing else hits that block, right? But if you have several writes that all hit about the same LBA range, they'll tend to get captured by the same block write out. This is classically why physical locality is good in file systems. I see. Yeah, anything we can do to avoid the actual random LBA problem will be to our benefit. Anyway, I I will keep coming commenting on your your document to to explain my 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 concern. But uh, I think the the problem was already resolved by by your answer just now. Thank you. Yeah, I'm. I'm, I'm hoping I'll have an actual implementation of the LBA tree component, like in a few weeks. And then it'll be a lot easier to explain how it works because I'll know how it works, <laughs> having actually written it. John. Uh, uh, last week I was mainly uh, trying to catch up with the current implementation of uh the crimson osd and uh 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 i did some investigation in in the um external interval uh management uh i, I think i'm sharing this but uh, uh at first i i thought it may may help to uh index the journal journal records so that we we do not have to um uh when the right when the right size is relatively small, then the minimum minimum block size. Uh, if we use this uh, external memory interval uh, interval management schemes, maybe uh, we don't we, we can avoid the the right amplification. But uh, uh, currently, I think it it may not may not work the way I think. But I am sharing it anyway, so maybe some other people can uh, have some other opinion. Uh, you know, uh, that's that's it for me. Thanks. I'll have a look. Thanks, Johan. Anything? We were talking yeah. over email, right? Yeah. Okay. Oh uh, yeah. yeah. Uh, okay. Uh, yeah, uh, last week I have identified the root cause of, of uh, ACN issue, and uh, I proposed uh, a two-part fix. The first part is that we need a new load balance policy from CSTAR, and the second I wrote a new uh, uh, socket unit test, and I've run it for, for the entire morning about uh, 13,000 times, and it doesn't happen again. Uh, so I have proposed this PR in the uh, GitHub here, and I firstly want to get the consensus of the direction is correct before uh, I start to upstream to C star because there are some concerns from Redox that we might not need this, but I still think that it is. It is required for for our implementation for the uh, shared nothing messenger. So, so that's a current block for me. So, if I yeah, understand it correctly, you you are you are, point, you are pinning the messenger to a certain um, certain CPU core when when yeah. when it's created, right? Yes. So the socket accepted from that messenger will always be on that core, even if we are running in a multi-core system application. This is a 
fix. This is the fix I have implemented. So previously, uh, when when we listening do listening in a multi-core system application, we have to listen on all cores, and the, the listener will just select a random core to create a socket, and we have no control of it. The only thing we have can do is to move the created socket to the uh, messenger core, and that will be result in a bug of the address and address and target. Uh, I have explained it in detail in that PR. I, I think it's if it, the fact that you managed to solve this is a good thing. I, uh, I was never managed to run a, a sister a test without uh, with ASIN without having a problem. So mm -hmm. on on the exactly on the socket uh, a deletion uh, phase. So it's good. I think uh, even if we can get around this in other means, the fact that we can do more uh, testing right, I think uh, it's important. Yeah, because we, we actually don't want to put a hard limit of dash C1 to our sister application, even we go to 101 mapping Crimson SD. Yeah, agreed. I think, yeah. Uh, well, it's uh, interesting. It seems that, uh, in other words, it looks that the accepting part in uh, in a sister network stack is uh, always sharded. It tries to use uh, as much uh, cores as it was uh, assigned to. Yes. I understand. It. Yes, its so load balance yeah. the policy is 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 forced on. We can't yep. control to disable it. It looks we really, new. Yeah. It looks we really need to introduce the, uh, mm -hmm. the extension. Have you taken a, a look? Uh, I saw your patches. I have you also the patch for sister, uh, and I saw you, you touched only the POSIX, uh, the POSIX stack implementation. Uh, have you got a mm -hmm. chance to uh, to take uh, a look also on the native? Likely no, the, similar the... approach where. Yep. It is a different story for native stack, but the truth is the same that we can we still yes, cannot move target to another but, uh, core. But the load balance course. is only applicable for for POSIX stack. Although it is a general interface in the API, but it is only working in POSIX stack. And I see. Yeah, that's that's the current situation. So this fix is only working for stack okay I will take a, I will take a look on, on native but I will what I want to do is to just ensure uh, that uh, the interface change is uh, limited solely to POSIX I would <clears throat> I would uh, I would expect that this will be our first uh, question from uh, from Avi uh, yeah. Guys, you have implemented the uh, extension to, uh, to the entire API. What about native stack? Yeah. Seems this some kinds of API doesn't think of the native stack implementations. Yeah. Uh, and I, by the way, uh, it was, uh, we still have uh, the concept of, uh, of uh, foreign uh, foreign connection uh, reference uh, cross uh, connection reference how do you feel about uh, about uh, cleaning the map sorry which map i mean that well at the moment uh, we st in the crimson messenger there is uh, a lot of things coming uh, from the initial uh, crossbar crossbar uh, assuming design uh, those things oh, are. Oh, that, that uh, I will don't... remove them in the future. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Uh, uh, it, it would be nice. They, a bit, they are just a bit confusing. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think so. But I want to first uh, fix uh, the bottom seams sure. in, in C star. Of course. Then, not in... Yeah. That's that's uh, I mean, future directions. It, it, sure. It's uh, one is uh, one is a <laughs> pack fix. One is a cleanup. So it's the priority yeah, yeah. is, uh, is obvious. Mm-hmm.
Okay. I think I just want to check with you if we go with this uh, this change. Does this imply that we will, even in an M to N mapping, we will have to assign a, a random uh, core for for messenger? No. Uh, we can with this fix we can set the messenger to a fixed core. But we are not enforced to do. Yeah. The patch doesn't, uh, it, it just adds a new policy. It doesn't mess with any existing one. Still, uh, I don't think that we will uh, want, in the, in the argument, uh, multi-threaded uh, uh, Crimson LZ, I still we will want to have a shared nothing messenger. It will boil yeah. down to the, to, the, uh, to the extension of a radius protocol. Yeah, I, and the decision to to send to to send message cross core is is not the responsibility of the messenger. It should be in OSD, I think. Yep. Okay. So this only uh, changes the, the only help to alleviate the problem in the in the test instead of uh, it had not had nothing to do with the crimson in, in general. Do I understand correctly? Uh, yes, I think mostly it is true. Okay, okay. Any questions? Uh, Ryan, just a quick question uh, about uh, the unique thing. Is that uh, the commit uh, you were uh, talking about? One second. Yeah. Okay, thanks. Take a look if it changes anything in our, uh, in the, you, you invested a lot of effort in analyzing uh, performance around uh, the handling of futures. So I want, I thought it might be interesting for you to look at it and see if it changes. Uh, sure. Uh, the, 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 actually, the task, uh, the task uh, is not, uh, should be actually, apart from the hot paths, from the already uh, full fight futures, it's created when you need to schedule uh, a continuation which happens if your, uh, if your value is not available, or the scheduler has enforced uh, you to, uh, you to go uh, for the, uh, for the reactor. Yeah, of course. Okay. So with you guys next uh, week. Have a good day. Have a good night. You too. See you. Bye. Thank you. Same for you. Yeah. See you guys. Yeah. See you. Yeah.